Now this is a very specific topic based video in which we'll be learning how to send data between ESP32 boards via ESP now but in JSON format. We'll be learning with a very basic code to send this JSON document via ESP now and then we'll be implementing our learning by making one small project of sending temperature and humidity data of the HT11 sensor to another ESP board via ESP now and displaying the data on an OLED screen and the data will be sent via JSON format. My motto of making this specific learning video is to make you ready for the next big project which is about ESP Now to Blink Cloud Gateway project using which you'll be able to send and receive data straight from the new Blink Cloud to the ESP board and broadcast that message to all other ESP board connected under ESP Now network. So that was the most demanded project under ESP Now series and before learning that amazing big project, let's first get comfortable with this topic. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM which is a PCB designer based software company. Now if I tell you one very interesting feature of the software then, here in LTM designer you can design rigid flex PCB. Now what is that? So till now you must have designed the PCB which has like rigid like solid PCBs if you are not able to bend. But here in LTM you can design a PCB in which some of the parts are rigid solid and some of the parts are flexible which can bend and the PCB can you know, uh, we can bend it in a two-fold manner just like the modern day smartphone right so this is a really very interesting useful and unique feature of the software well you can also try out this and many other unique and interesting features of this designer software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description yes by clicking on the link you'll get access to the free trial version of this software so go ahead try the free trial version of LTM designer software now JSON is something that I've discussed a lot of time in my videos but still if you're new to this channel let me tell you about JSON in very brief. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation which is just a way to represent the data. That's it. For example, this is the normal way we used to declare a variable and store the data in it in a C, C++ language. Now if you want to represent this in JSON format, well it will look something like this. Now in the C++ code we used to call this as a variable and this as a data while in JSON this will be termed as a key and this will be termed as a value so a JSON document will be containing key value pairs so this is the simplest explanation of a JSON document so now let's jump onto the code and let's see how we can convert a normal variable data pair into a key value pair in JSON let me go through that Okay, so here is the code for the sender and here is the code for the receiver. So I'll be covering both the codes uh, one by one, starting with the sem uh, sender part. Then here, first of all, we need to provide the broadcast address because we'll be sending this data to the receiver. So we need to add the MAC address of the receiver. Okay, so we need to add that here. After that, here one more library is included called as Arduino JSON. Okay, so Arduino JSON is responsible to convert that uh, variable data pair into key value pair. Okay, I'll discuss this uh, later on. After that, we have created a string variable and a JSON document, okay? Uh, starting with the setup part, first of all, so initializing the Wi-Fi in station mode, initializing ESP now, pretty convert, uh, adding the, what you can say, MAC address into the peer device or as a peer device, pretty common for ESP now, and registering the callback function as on data send. So this is a send data callback function, which is written here. So whenever we send the data, it will uh, be printing whether it is successfully sent or whether the delivery is failed, okay? Pretty common as a ESP now uh, code. Okay, after that, going into the loop part where all the conversion thing is happening. So first of all, we are, you know, clearing the JSON string. This is a variable, which is a string, and we are just clearing it. After that, what we are doing is, as we have created this doc, which is nothing but a JSON document, uh, here we are declaring a key. So key in this case is A, and we are storing the value inside it as one. So, okay, so this is one key value pair. Second key value pair is created, which is B, and the value is a string, which is on, okay? So here you can declare an integer, like a normal number without adding that double quotation mark, and to add any character or a string, you need to add the double quotation mark, okay? So th with this, we have created two key value pair, A and B with the value one and on, okay? So this is a normal declaration. Now to convert this into a JSON document, we need to uh, use this function called as serialized JSON, in which it takes two parameters. One is the doc, 
which is nothing but a JSON document. And second is the string in which we need to store that JSON document. Okay. So after writing this particular thing, what we'll be getting inside the uh, JSON data string as it will be looking something like this. I'll quickly uh, create a comment and uh, let you show how, how it will be, you know, visualized. Okay. So first of all, a bracket, then inside a the bracket, it will be written as a colon one, then comma, it will be written as okay it will be us into double quotation mark then it will be written as perfect so this is how the data will be represented uh, as a json formatted data okay so this conversion is uh, done by the serialization function and after that what we are doing is we are just sending this string using ESP now send function that we have seen in all other ESP now episodes okay so broadcast address then JSON string like the payload that we need to send and the size of the data okay now here as you can see I have written JSON data plus two now the plus two represent this two brackets okay because inside this uh, the these two brackets are not considered so hence I have added plus two size so that it can include the brackets as well pretty simple and after that we are also printing the data inside the serial monitor just to visualize it after delay of one second what we are doing we are sending another data which is uh, the value will be changed to zero from one it will change to zero and the value of b will be changed to off which was initially on and again we are serializing it and we are sending that json string so it is pretty common so this is how you can send the json formatted data via esp now it's really very simple yet very very useful okay uh, let us quickly check the receiver part of the code as well and let's see how it works okay in the receiver part what we have done is inside the setup we are just initializing the Wi-Fi and the ESP now protocol after that we have used the on data receive function as a receiver callback function and the loop is empty because we are just receiving the data we are not at all sending okay so everything is done inside the on data receive function let's just uh, check it out on data receive function first of all we are uh, storing the data inside this buffer variable after that we'll be converting it to string and storing it inside the JSON data string okay after that, we're printing the data uh, received as it is, which will be in JSON format. And now we need to convert that JSON formatted data into that variable data pair. Okay. So for that, we'll be using the function called as deserialize JSON. So serialize JSON function will convert the normal data into JSON and deserialize function will be uh, doing the vice versa thing, which is convert JSON formatted data into a normal data. After converting it, if there is some error, it will be printing the error. If there is no error, what we can do is we can just write the variable name and we can you know fetch the value uh, by defining the key okay so in our case the key is a and b okay so we can fetch their values by writing this uh in this format which is doc into square brackets the name of the key okay so value of a will be stored inside the integer a variable and value of b will be stored inside the uh, constant character pointer or we can say string or variable b okay and after that we are printing the data as it is that's a simple receiver code okay so this is how you can send and receive data using json so it's a very basic example code in which we are sending the data of a and b okay let us visualize this in action okay, okay so i successfully uploaded the sender and the receiver code in the respective boards and first let us see the sender part of the code this is the sender part okay and in the, in the sender part as you can see first of all it is printing the json formatted data and after that it says uh, delivery success means it successfully delivered to the receiver part okay so after every second it is sending the data one on and zero off so this is how the data is being sent now let's just open the receiver part and let's just visualize the data i'll select the receiver port and open the serial monitor perfect as you can see first of all it is printing the json formatted string after that after deserializing we can see that uh, a variable a is printed as zero and variable b is printed as off so we fetched the data and stored inside our own made variable or the local variables okay this is how uh, you can transfer the data using json and it's really very simple very easy to use and it is really very important that we'll be uh, visualizing in the next project okay but uh, we are not stopping here this is a very basic sample code and now just implement this learning in a very small project so what I'll do, I'll use the DHT11 sensor and attach it to the uh, sender part 
according to this connection diagram. And after that, I'll take the receiver ESP32 board and use the OLED screen and connect them according to this connection diagram. So now let us try to understand the code on how we can send the DHT11 census data and display it on an OLED screen via JSON format. Okay, so here is the code for the uh, DHT11 sender and the OLED receiver, okay? Now here I'll only cover the changes that you need to make as compared to the previous example code, okay? So talking about the sender part, the DHT11 part, then here, first of all, then say library to be declared, then the pin number to be declared on which the DHT11 sensor is attached, after that the DHT type should be declared, okay? Using this function, we are initializing this particular DHT sensor. Using this line, we are beginning this DHT11 sensor and here inside the main loop, we are reading reading and storing the data of humidity into H variable and temperature into T variable. Now here we have created different key value pair. Okay. So here one of the key value pair is temp in which we'll be storing the value T, which is nothing but the temperature data. And here inside the uh, hum key, we are storing the value of H, which is nothing but the humidity data. After declaring this, we are serializing it. That means we are converting the normal data uh, variable pair into a key value pair. And after that, we are just sending that string to the broadcast address, which is nothing but the receiver ESP now address. Okay, that's the sender part of the code. In the receiver part, we, what we have done is we have declared the SSD1306 uh, library because we are using that OLED screen for that, which is nothing but 128 by 64 pixels OLED screen and which is connected uh, at the address 0 cross 3C, which is the I2C address of this particular display. Okay, so here inside the callback function, we have made a couple of changes rest of all the code is exactly the same okay so in the callback function what we are doing is we are first of all receiving that json string okay which is stored inside the json data string variable after that what we are doing is we are deserializing that because uh, we want to fetch a particular data coming from the JSON document. After that, we are storing the temp value inside the temperature uh, float variable and humidity value inside the hump float variable. Okay, we are printing it on serial monitor and after that we are printing it on the OLED screen as well. So that's the change that we uh, made. We're sending the JSON data of temperature humidity, receiving the JSON data, converting in, uh, it into the normal data value pair or the variable data pair displaying on top OLED screen. Okay. So I'll be uploading the uh, sender and receiver code into the respective board. And after uploading, let us test this project in action. Okay. So I'll turn on the smartphone's camera uh, and here is the project. Okay. So here is the receiver on which the OLED screen is connected and on which we are getting the data as 27 degrees Celsius as a temperature and 43% humidity. And here is the sender part on which the EST11 sensor is connected. Okay. And this is happening via ESP now using JSON format data. Okay. So the project is perfectly working fine. And this was a one way communication where we are sending the data from one side to the receiver side. Okay. But similarly, we can use a two way communication of, uh, of ESP now as well. Like like we can send and receive data in JSON format whose code you can find in the GitHub repository and I won't be showing it uh, here like the working demo of that two-way communication here. It's it's kind of an assignment for you. You can try out that code, uh, look at it and uh, try to make one project out of the two-way communication code. Okay. So yeah, that was all about the JSON formatted data, like sending the JSON formatted data via ESP now. And as I told you, this learning is really very important for the upcoming big project of ESP now gateway. Okay. ESP now to Blink Cloud Gateway. I hope you're excited about this project and do let me know your excitement level in uh, like from one to 10. Do drop your comments like how much excited you are for that upcoming project. And based upon your comments and likes and engagement, I'll try to make video as fast as possible. Okay, yeah, that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now just wait for my next one to explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.